Hi, I'm Dr. Shakti and we'll be discussing about transport across membrane today. So in today's lecture, we'll be discussing about facilitated diffusion, your uh, simple diffusion, non-ionic diffusion, and a bit about primary and secondary active transport. So when you talk about your membrane, you know that it is a lipid bilayer. So you've got phospholipids there predominantly. And uh, this layer, since it is made of lipid, for any substance to cross through it, of course, a polar substance cannot directly cross through it. So you need something lipid soluble. So greater the lipid solubility, more easier for it to naturally diffuse through it without the need for any uh, carriers or, you know, any pores. Okay. So that is the first thing you need to know. Greater the lipid solubility, uh, better will be the diffusion. Another thing is the concentration difference. So this concentration gradient is a very important role. So especially when you talk about, uh, you know, the movement of any substance, okay, whether it's polar or non-polar, concentration gradient plays a role. Now consider there is a concentration gradient and this is a polar substance and you open up a channel. So that will open up a way for these polar substances to cross through. Okay, so normally because of the Brownian movement and influence of the kinetic energy over here, especially when it's more closely packed, higher in concentration. So that will mean the net movement is somehow going to end up going towards this direction. So the net movement will go from high concentration to low concentration. That is without doubt. So let's just briefly discuss about what is fixed law. So in fixed law, what is conferred upon to us is the rate of diffusion and that rate of diffusion when you talk about with respect to concentration gradient we saw that it's directly proportional greater the concentration gradient greater the will be the rate okay so as i explained earlier it's all about the kinetic energy and rounding movement and all that okay now the negative symbol over here simply denotes that it is moving down the concentration gradient that's why the negative symbol has come over there now in the next thing is the thickness of the membrane so when you talk about membrane, greater the thickness means more layer that has to pass through in order to move to the other side. So in any of these substances for diffusion to take place, to go through it, if it is more thick, then it will actually hamper the process of diffusion. So the rate of diffusion goes down. Okay, so that is inversely proportional. And then let's talk about area. So we just talked about a opening over here, okay, a pore and look at the surface area of that pore okay so in one instance that pore is this big in another instance the pore is this small okay where do you think diffusion will be greater so this is basically the difference between a service road and a express highway okay so greater the area more will be the rate of diffusion so this is also directly proportional okay so the rate of diffusion is directly proportional to the concentration gradient directly proportional to your area and inversely proportional to your thickness of the membrane. Apart from that, you can put something called the diffusion coefficient. So this simply is a lot of extra things that influence this. For example, temperature. Okay, so you keep it constant, but otherwise temperature varies according to that the whole nature of your membrane changes, the movement, everything changes. Okay, so the electric charge, the pressure difference, there are a lot of factors that affect the permeability as such. Okay, so a lot of these things together come under the diffusion coefficient. Okay, so this is your basic fixed law. Okay, equation for your basic fixed law. So now that we talked about simple diffusion, now comes your facilitated diffusion. So you can see over here, small particles, which are very small, they can easily diffuse through. As, they, as long as they are lipid soluble, they can diffuse through the membrane. But if they are large, and it will be a little more difficult, even if it is lipid soluble, for it to move through. Okay, so large substances, now to move along the concentration gradient, it needs a carrier like this. Okay, so you can see here how the carrier is working, and the conformational change is going to make it go to the opposite side. So this is what happens with regard to facilitated diffusion. So you can see the difference between facilitated and simple diffusion over here. So this is the concentration 
and this is the j that we are talking about that is the rate of diffusion so as the concentration keeps increasing the rate of diffusion keeps increasing okay so this is a pretty basic concept and you can see over here what you can notice here in case of a facilitated diffusion is it keeps increasing with your concentration until it reaches a, a threshold sort of thing beyond which it cannot increase so it gets saturated okay so the saturation kinetics is involved over here because the carriers are limited in number okay so once all the carriers are used up and they are completely used it cannot increase it any further than that okay but another thing you can notice is if you talk about your uh, simple diffusion this is the graph over here now with regard to this what you can notice is this is much more faster you can see the slope over here so the slope ultimately shows you the rate of this okay so this is much more faster over here okay so that you can appreciate better by these terms called km j max half j max and all that okay so km is actually that concentration so it's on the x-axis x-axis you know is the concentration so it is that concentration at which your this whatever substance it is uh, it reaches half of that of the j max okay so rate of diffusion becomes half of the maximum that is your km okay so th this is uh, kind of constant for different uh, substances and such a thing is not there in this because here there is no j max okay so you can appreciate it better over here so concentration increases your rate of diffusion increases but in facilitated diffusion it's much more faster compared to this okay so say this is your km at this km it has already reached half of j max okay if you took, take a look at simple diffusion at that same concentration it's only reaching this much but on the other hand once saturation has attained in facilitated diffusion increase in concentration does not increase your rate of diffusion but on the other hand for simple diffusion if you keep increasing the concentration the rate of diffusion keeps increasing now that that's done let's discuss about non-ionic diffusion so this is a peculiar way by which certain polar substances be converted into non-polar substances so that it can pass through the membrane so you you know that the membrane is uh, lipid in nature okay so something polar like bicarbonate or h plus so none of these things can actually pass through it unless there's a channel so they get converted into some non-polar substance that is non-ionic in nature so that they can diffuse through it so let's take an example so this this is usually a process that occurs in your kidney in the nephrons okay so when bicarbonate is coming you're excreting bicarbonate out so one thing that the body does is it secretes h plus into your fluid okay so this can be many ways either sodium can be taken in and h plus can be given out uh, or actively uh, h plus can be taken outside but whatever it is finally this two forms h2co3 h2co3 will form co2 and h2 now this is something that is able to diffuse directly through without any pores and all that okay so now they're going to diffuse in this is non-ionic diffusion and they from inside they form h2co3 again and split up into h plus and bicarbonate and this bicarbonate gets reabsorbed so this reabsorption again uh, it can be different ways so either sodium and bicarbonate co-transport can be there or your so, uh, bicarbonate can be exchanged with uh, chloride through anion exchanges so whatever so ultimately this bicarbonate got reabsorbed but bicarbonate was not the one that was directly diffusing instead it shifted to a non-ionic form and then diffused so this is an example of non-ionic diffusion so now talking about the active transport what you have to understand is earlier when we were talking about uh, the concentration gradient we said that things move from 
high concentration to a low low concentration so that equilibrium state is attained okay so if i were to open up a channel over here this is supposed to normally come over here because that is more favorable okay but in case we want to move this ion or whatever it is up the gradient to the opposite side what do you have to do so for that to do something unfavorable you need to spend energy and do it okay so that is where active transport comes into play okay so over here for this moment atp is utilized AD, from the adp and the inorganic phosphate will phosphorylate the channel and that will help in some conformational change that will help the substance move up the concentration gradient so this is the type of active transport okay so this is a primary active transport that we are talking about now another thing is a secondary active transport so what you have to understand is this energy that was utilized elsewhere is now indirectly going to affect this channel so ultimately what happened over here is this channel okay this transport whatever happened that maintained this concentration gradient it's more outside less inside so from inside if it's taking it outside basically it's just reinforcing this concentration gradient okay now if i were to open up this channel over here and this substance is now going to go down the concentration gradient and this won't reach the equilibrium state because actively you're taking it out and you're keeping on taking it out so now along with this another substance goes along with it a co-transport okay so this is an example of secondary active transport so here energy is not directly used over here it was used in another instance and that is indirectly leading to maintenance of a concentration gradient that will help move the substances okay so this is an example of secondary active transport so you can see this example over here sodium uh, phosphate sodium is going potassium is coming in potassium is going so this is your normal sodium potassium atps now because of this the concentration gradient is maintained because of which you can see how sodium along with glucose some sort of sugar is going in okay so this is a secondary active transport and this is what is called the co-transport because both of them are going in the same direction now let's take a look at examples so when you talk about primary active the most important one in the body is your sodium potassium atps okay another example is your uh, hydrogen potassium atps so this is your proton pump which is there in your uh, stomach for acid secretion then is your calcium pump so you must be familiar with the term circa s c r c a so it is sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum calcium channel okay so that again is a active primary active transport mechanism that is there okay so if you want to go a little more higher level you can just uh, talk about all these different types of uh, channels that are there so there are p type so your sodium potassium atp is a p type channel okay uh, then f type in, you know in a mitochondria for electron transport chain and all that uh, you have the f0 f1 so the f4 f1 uh, type of thing that is there for h plus to move across it so that is your f type your v type is actually vesicular so this is especially seen in lysosomes and all that where again h plus acidification of the uh, vesicle is happening through this and then there's the abc type and one common example for the CFTR, so cystic fibrosis. So uh, if this channel is now there, it results in that. So that is an example of your ABC type. Okay. So I'm not going to much detail. Uh, maybe we can do another video about this someday. Okay. Next is a secondary active transport. So there's a co-transport as well as a counter uh, transport. So in co-transport, we had seen the example earlier. Okay. Sodium, glucose going in the same direction. Okay, so that, that is why it's called co-transport. So sodium glucose transporters. So there's one, there's two. Okay, two is what is most commonly seen in your kidney. Okay, so in the kidney, 90% of the PCT is made up of SGLT2. And there is one uh, also which is there, which is around 10%, but majority of it is two. Okay, in your intestine, one is the main important one. Okay, apart from that you can see here sodium along with iodide okay sodium along with amino acid so you what you can notice here is all sodium 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 okay and that is where your sodium potassium atp is coming 
okay so this is one type of co-transport mechanism then as counter transport so in counter transport you can see here sodium exchange with calcium sodium exchange for hydrogen okay so the gradient for sodium to come in is given by your primary active transport and then when sodium comes in along with that something which has similar charge is taken outside so it's a sodium calcium exchanger which is seen in your heart okay and your sodium hydrogen exchanger so this again we had seen it earlier when i was talking about non-ionic diffusion i had given you many examples two examples actually of how your h plus is secreted so one example is your sodium hydrogen exchanger okay okay so now that that is done let's just discuss briefly what is going to be there in the next episode so we'll talk about paracellular flow transcellular flow vesicular transport and important things like clatrin caviolin pinocytosis and all that okay which is not given much properly in textbooks so we'll discuss all that and also another lecture we'll talk about a more detailed working model of sodium potassium ATP, much more detailed so that uh, you come up to date and understand the intricacies that happen over there okay and of course i'll be putting up uh, mcq tests for whatever has been taught today and in the next class for your transport okay so stay tuned in thank you